In today's daily halacha, we're going to discuss a number of factors that relate to the prayers of Rosh Hashanah and Aseris Kamei Tshuva. It's brought down in Achreinen that the Chazan to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur has to review the davening, the meaning of the words, and the Midrashic meanings behind the prayers. It's added in letters of the Rebbe that he must also know the Hasidic teachings behind the words in the prayers. And special emphasis is to be, paid, is to be placed specifically with the piyutim, with the hymns that are sounded, that are, that are, that are, that are read during the Chazar Sashats of Shachris and Mosef. This, however, doesn't only apply to the Chazan, but applies to every individual and as is brought down in the Mate Ephraim, and in the Kaf Ephraim, and in the Shari Tshuva, that every father that has time is to teach his children the meaning of the prayers, and the meaning especially of the Piyutim. And people have to take out time to do this, to understand what is it that they are saying in the Daphne. Interestingly, it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch, Simen Tovkov Pei Bei Sivzayin, that although during the year a person does not have to be so particular and careful regarding correct punctualization, punctuation and nosach of the words that he reads, when it comes to Rosh Hashanah and during the praise of Aser Shimei Tshuva, one must be especially careful regarding the nusach that he reads and the exact punctuation of the words. And the reason brought down for this is because since these are days of judgment, we don't follow only one's kavana, one's inner intent behind the words, but we also follow what the actual words being said. Regarding the regular year, there's a story of the wife of the Tzemach Tzedek that one time her son, the Ma'vil, mentioned something a little belittling regarding her saying of Tehillim. How she couldn't memorize the Tehillim because every day she read it differently with a different punctuation in a different way, meaning that she couldn't read it properly. The Tzemach Tzedek scorned at the statement of the son of Mario. But the idea is, is that in other times we don't play as much emphasis to the wording of the prayer as much as to the intent of the heart of the person praying. But in Rosh Hashanah, which is Yem Hadin, even the words being said, irrelevant of the Kavana, have special emphasis, and therefore a person must be specially careful. Based on this, a very long list of different words and punctuations are brought down in Paiskim of how things are to be read, such as, for example, the discussion if one should say Lichaim or Lachaim. If one should say Lichaim Toivim, Versus l'chaim, versus just l'chaim. If what you say it's emes, or you say it's malkeinu. There's a lot, a lot of different discussions regarding particular words, and the rule is, is that a person should be extra careful during a sesame tshuva to read exactly the way it is printed in the sidur. We're going to discuss now regarding the mizmor of shira malis that's recited in shachas. So it's a minog to recite Shiramaus Mimamakim between Yishtabach and Bolchu throughout the days of Asar Shimei Tshuva. What's the marker, the source of this minhog? As well, what does someone do if he's, if he's found in a different place of davening while the congregation is already up to Yishtabach and is reciting Shiramaus? So this minog is brought down in Kisvi Arizal, in the writings of the Arizal. And it's brought down in the Magan of Ram in chapter 54 in the name of that reason. That is the first marker regarding the saying of this Mizma. The Magan of Ram mentions this Mizma and brings a discussion of whether it is permitted to say it or maybe it is considered an interval between Yishtabach and Birchus Krishma. And in the Shulchanov, the Alter Rebbe actually does not even make any mention of this in chapter 54. 
However, in the city, the Alter Rebbe placed the Mizmor in between, hence proving that he does not hold that this saying of the Mizmor has any interval between the prayers. Nevertheless, there are communities that are not accustomed to say Shiramas at all during a service in Mechuva because of this reason. What, however, is the reason behind our Minhag and others that are accustomed this way to say it and don't consider it an interval if it's not brought down in Paiskin and the Magan Avram leaves it in question. So the explanation is, as explained in some Achreinim, that since it is being said as a praise to Hashem, so it is similar to the rest of the prayers said in Psuki de Zimra, which are verses, Psuki de Zimra, of praise, and so to this Shuramalis is a verse of praise. So explains the Digul Miravava and Simon Nundalat 54, that it's not considered an interval. And it's also brought in Aruch HaShulchan and Torah Chaim Seifer. The Kafa Chaim therefore concludes, after bringing a list of Paiskim, that one should not be scared, one should not refrain from saying the Mizm of Shira Malis Mimamakim, and he should not worry about the issue of making an interval in Davin. What is emphasized, though, in certain, in certain Svarim, is that the entire idea of this Mizmor is when it's said specifically between Yishtabach and Birchas Krishna. And this negates the custom of certain communities that they push it off and say it only after Tachanun, or prior to Tachanun, but not in the middle of Tachanun. So what exactly is the greatness of this Mizmor that's brought down in Kisve Arizal? What is its meaning? So in Sifre Kabbalah and Kisve Arizal, it's brought down that the ten days of repentance of Sarashim Echuva, each day there is a different level of Gvura and of Oymik, of depth, which is revealed on that day. So there are ten Gvuras. Each day that a person says, Shiramalus Mima Makim, Hashem, he sweetens the Gvura of that day. So let's say on the first day, which is Rosh Hashanah, the first day we say Shiramalus, that is the day of Gvura of Keser. And the saying of Shiramalus sweetens the Gvuras of that day. And through sweetening all ten Gvuras on each day of Hazar Shmei we accomplish the general sweetening of all the Gvuras, and we guarantee all the Jewish people a good, healthy, and sweet year. That is what is brought down in Kisvei Arizal. In Sifri Chassidus, especially in Sifri Chassidus Chabad, there are a number of Maimodim that discuss the mile of the greatness of this Mizmon. And while not so much emphasizing as it emphasizes in Sifri Kabbalah the effect it has on the upper worlds, being Matak and the Gvuras, it rather emphasizes what it does to the person himself. And the Altebbe brings down the Kutitayro that the Mizma of Shiramaz Mimamakim represents the deep cry of the soul, the cry of the Yechidah. That a person can have many depths of levels of a cry. And this represents the deepest level. The level of the Cholibid HaRashticha. And the level of Mimamakim is of a level even deeper that comes from the essence of the Yechidah itself. And this is like someone who's digging in a deep, deep well in order to gain water, and once he reaches there, a gush of water comes out. And this is more advantageous than even other types of sources of, of water. It is not the Chabad custom to open the Arin while reciting this Mizmor, and likewise we do not say it verse after verse after the Chazan. However, in other communities, they open the Arin while it is said, and they do recite it verse after verse. This myth must have been recited even when davening in private and is not only something to be said when you're with a minion. Few questions. What if the din of the Chazan forgot to recite Shira Malus and someone reminded him and he already began Kaddish? So this is brought down in Paiskin. And what a person is to do in such a situation, the Chazan, if he already began Kaddish, then he gets to finish Kaddish and continue straight to Yitzhar, omitting Shira Malus. As once you begin Kaddish, you have to finish. If a person is holding in the middle of Tzuki de Zimra, and the congregation has already reached Shira Malus, what is he to do? So it's brought down in the Mate Ephraim, al that he is to actually stop, 
and say it together with the congregation. Furthermore, they add that upon reaching Ishtabach, he is to repeat Shiramalos again prior to Yetzirah. And the reason for this is because the entire mile and greatness of this Shiramalos is when it says specifically in between Yishtabach and Yetzirah. And that's when it affects its Tikkun. But nonetheless, when you're davening and you haven't reached yet that part with the minion, but the minion saying it, you should also stop and say it together. So a person davening, davening not on the same pace as a minion will end up saying it twice with the minion, even if he's in the middle of Sukkot and also when he reaches Yishtabach.